In the legal cannabis industry, long-standing misconceptions are especially heinous. With the established notions of THC being reevaluated, the impact is now being subject to scrutiny by members of the scientific community. These are their stories. I have a question, and it's a doozy. And it could be my last question based off of the response we get to this video. A perfectly emotionally stable response from no one in particular. Here I go. You ready? THC gets you high, right? You sure? All right, everyone, put down your hair cuts and get your hate mail stationary ready. But before you answer, you might want to consider a few bits of evidence. Evidence to the contrary. Evidence so shocking, it could rock the <laughs> of society as we know it. This might be the last video, so censor it. Or don't. Frankly, I don't give a heck. Does THC get you high? Everyone says yes. No one says no. I say, cue intro. THC, the high compound in cannabis. Greatly sought after by everyone looking to enjoy a buzz. If you're new to cannabis, THC is activated by heat, converting it from THCA to delta-9 THC. Delta-9 THC then latches onto the receptors in your brain, causing a high, allegedly. Even up and coming rare cannabinoids tend to be mixed with THC upon their emergence in the market so that the average consumer will be attracted to them. THC pulls a lot of weight. So am I just being a hater trying to bring down the good name of THC? And would this evidence even be admissible in court? It is. I even have my lawyer speak down. Your Honor, I object. Per se ye, counsel, case, law, constitution, and if you want to know the rest, hey, by the rights. How bizarre. Bailiff. Examine my statement. THC can get you high, but does it always? What are the issues with strength, potency, and quality that prove my point? These points are not meant to attack the good name of THC. It's mainly to define strength and potency in light of that degenerate SUV rolling two-bit swindler THC. Strength is often interchangeable with potency, but they're not the same thing. Potency is the amount of a drug it takes to produce an effect. For instance, it takes a smaller amount of a 30% THC product to feel lifted, livelier. You know, that uh, vodio dodo you get from cannabis compared to a 15% product. Product is more potent, you don't have to use more to get the same effect. Contrast this with the amount of something given in a specific dosage, and here we get strength, or strumpf. So what, what's the debate? There is no debate, but there is a question. Is there a point where adding more strength or potency does not elicit a high? Where the amount of input doesn't match the output? Get that slide sliding. Your brain has a certain capacity to react to different molecules for a couple of reasons. First of all, your receptors can become saturated. All the spots are full, seats taken. And because of a molecule's affinity for receptors, the affinity is how strongly the molecule will latch in to the receptor spots. You can only handle so much of a certain thing with a change in effect. Your brain is like my patients at a crosswalk. There's limits to that too. But do we have any evidence for this with cannabinoids? And more specifically, do we have any evidence for this with THC? We do. A recent study from the University of Colorado found that THC potency doesn't really track with the level of intoxication. The study had 121 flour and concentrate users use their filthy, filthy product openly, out in the open, where I play. And the product from the flour users ranged from 16% to 24%. And the concentrate product ranged from 70% to 90%. It turns out that the flower folks and the concentrate contingent ended up with similar neurobehavioral patterns, which means 
both of the groups were equally high. Equally? What? But 90 is, is bigger than 24. 90 is bigger than 24. Doesn't he know anything about how you measure cannabis strumpf? <laughs> What does this mean? It means that there is a certain point where you are not getting any more buzzed with more THC. Sorry. When it comes to THC, your brain is not like a vending machine, where one THC in means one high out. Also because I've never tipped over a brain rather than deal with my own personal problems. And take two. Also because I've never tipped over a brain because I needed some quick cash and a cold pop. There's products out there so strong and so potent that the majority of the THC in the product will not contribute to your experience. So THC getting you high depends on the dose. Huh, how's that feel? Anyone who doubted the title of this video, hmm? I don't know, I don't know about, about uh, uh, diminishing, diminishing returns, returns but, but I do, I do know, know about, about diminishing, diminishing return, return to, to the, the next, next slide. slide. <laughs> nicely. Well, well, well. It appears your favorite boyfriend, THC, isn't what you thought he would be. I'd never take $20 out of your purse when you're asleep. So let's start taking my word for it, shall we? THC is not the end all and be all. There is so, so, so much more. THC can even consistently intoxicate. It should be considered one element of a bigger picture. There are other more important factors in the chemotype, the totality of the chemicals the cannabis contains. The first is, of course, other cannabinoids, most of which you can find out about in ridiculous detail on this channel. Each will customize or enhance your experience with or without THC. Are they worth it? Let me work it. They take your normal high, flip it, and reverse it. The second is terpenes. The isoprene-based aromatics that give cannabis a host of different tastes, scents, and qualities. Some can enhance your buzz like myrcene, which actually lets more THC into your brain. And others like terpinolene, which can actually change your perception of time, making it as if time has slowed down. And even ones for focus like limonene and ones for improving mood like germacrine B. There are a host of terpenes and information on them can be found on this channel as well. To even change the scope of what we're looking at, there are flavonoids. Flavonoids can actually change your body and your experience over a long period of time. Years. Much more nuanced than THC, and they can be nuanced on top of THC. That street littering cracks my- <laughs> THC has a lot of limits, and where its limits start, so does education. If the customer looks beyond the pursuit of sheer potency and embraces the very warm, very hot, embrace of other valuable metrics for quality, the true investigation into your preferred cannabis actually begins. A whole new world of discovery opens up when we demand more than just a certain percentage from bud tenders all the way to producers. The nuanced terpene profiles, the rare cannabinoids, the novel lineages, making lists of five and OCD. These are what we should be pursuing to shift the market, my friends. Thanks for hearing me out, your continued trust and confidence in me. And until the next time that 420 investigates, we will see you soon. Citation needed.